to Hope today. We're so glad that you've joined us today. We believe that you have a future and a hope, that God has a plan and a purpose for you, and we're just praying that this program can be part of that. I'm Tom Hollis. I am here with Anna Fry today. Hello, hello. Happy Friday. You're, you're way so over fun. there. I know. We're, way we're over like there. a world apart. <laughs> it's the beginning of Labor Day weekend, yeah. and it's so fun to be here. I love being here on Fridays because I just feel like we're all a little bit happier on Fridays. Sure, you know, why not? It's a great day. And uh, Sydney is, is off today. And actually, I will be off next week. That is great. My, my wife and I are celebrating Anna 40 years, 40th anniversary. So, wow. yeah, so yeah. it's actually a couple months late in the celebration but because you're still celebrating. everything is a couple of months late <laughs> in our lives in 2020, That's isn't it? That's very true. Well, um, happy anniversary. Thank you. Thank mm -hmm. you so much. Uh, it's interesting about time passing and how uh, God does great things, though. But we have a verse for you. 2 mm -hmm. Corinthians chapter 1, verses 4 and 5 says this, Who comforts us in all our affliction, mm -hmm. so that we will be able to comfort those who are in any affliction with the comfort with which we ourselves are comforted by God. For just as the sufferings of Christ are ours in abundance, so also our comfort is abundant through Christ. That's a lot of comfort. That's a lot of comfort in that in those couple of verses. Yeah. What what does that verse bring to your well, mind? Well, it is a mouthful yeah. of words. And for me, I, I sat and I had to look at that scripture and I read out of the NIV and it, it before that verse it talked about how God is the God of all comfort. All comfort, not just a little bit, but all. And in the NIV version, it talks about how it overflows, which means it can't be contained. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you've ever seen water that hasn't been contained, but it overflows. I think about when I was little and I overflowed the bathtub and um, it like went down on the floor and went through the ceiling into <laughs> the kitchen below and it just like permeated everywhere. And that's how God's comfort is well, for us that it fills us so much that it can overflow and then we can comfort others in their trouble. I think times that's the trouble. key is that that comfort then gets us to uh, be able to comfort other people because God's done something in our life, mm -hmm. He's done something in your life, and then we can bless one another with that. Yeah, that's great. absolutely. Well, we all need comfort and counsel in this season of constant change. And our next guest is the president of American Association of Christian Counselors, and he has strategies to deal with our stressed out and fearful world. He's the author of a new book called Peace for Your Mind and Hope for Your Heart. And he joins us now, Dr. Tim Clinton. Welcome to Hope Today. Hi, Anna. Hi, Tom. Great to be with you all. Well, we're so glad to have you here with us. Now, you talk in your book about how there could be a new virus moving forward that is not a germ, but it is anxiety and worry. Can you talk to us about that? Well, I remember when the pandemic first hit, Julie and I were in our living room and uh, everybody was over, over intoxicating or overdosing on the news. And Julie looked at me and said, Tim, I got to turn this thing off. I mean, this is making me insane. It's making me crazy. And you start uh, driving down the road, you know, right in the midst of the initial phase. And it was like, this is surreal. I mean, this doesn't even make any sense. And as we've journeyed together, and you guys know that the pandemic has thrown us all sideways, uh, what we're seeing in the streets now, and what's happening as we press toward the election, things are really out of control. And uh, it just... As a result, we've seen a major uptick in a lot of issues such as fear and anxiety, uh, an uptick in depression, an uptick in even suicide, substance abuse, and more. The president even said it's intuitive to know that we're going to experience a major mental health crisis. And we're seeing it everywhere from our elderly to our kids. So is it a sin to struggle with anxiety? Oh, I think you can look in the scriptures and journey through uh, a lot of the individuals in the Bible who battled with things like depression and, uh, and more, uh, even thoughts of taking um, their life. Yet God, who is ultimately our great hope, is where we anchor ourselves. That's why I love being um, a Christ-centered professional counselor. I love seeing what's happening in mental health, where people are anchoring themselves into the 
in the hope that we have in Christ. And when you're able to share that message, what a gift that we can give to people. Mm -hmm. I'm so thankful that you clarify that because that is a myth in the Christian culture. So how can we as Christians um, stand up against that anxiety and worry and choose hope in the midst of it? You know, um, Anna, I think first of all, just um, doing what you're doing right now, having conversation about it. Uh, a lot of people, hey, the scripture says, my people perish because of a lack of knowledge. A lot of people don't understand what depression is and uh, what are some of the causes of, de causes of depression. Depression can be um, induced by biology, certainly by repeated uh, events that are out of, con out of my control. They just keep hammering on my heart. Mm -hmm. um, if I'm in a highly conflictual relationship, say a really tough marriage, uh, we know that outcome studies show that women, for example, have higher rates of of discouragement and depression, suffer physically, etc. So when you're getting pounded by life itself, it's easy to become overwhelmed by everything that's going on in my life. No wonder we have scriptures like Psalm 46 that says, Elohim, God is our refuge and our strength, a present help during times of trouble. No wonder Paul wrote in Philippians 4, hey, be anxious for nothing, but in everything through prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Take them there because why? This life is rough. Job, um, Job 5, 7, Job 14, 1 said, man who is born of woman is but a few days and full of trouble. Probably a lot of people out there, I've had my fair share, have gotten pounded by a lot of life. And um, problems at the end of the day won't really be the issue. You know, there, there, there are some of us who seem to get an overdose of problems, but Problems aren't really the issue. It's what you do with them, do in the midst of them that will determine your future. Mm -hmm. Dr. Clinton, you know, as, as we come out of the pandemic, hopefully we are coming out of the pandemic, but as we come to the place where we're now entering in as uh, students are going back to school uh, after a fashion, not quite what we uh, normally expect. Teachers are going back into the classroom, sort of. And, and like my, my youngest daughter, she got laid off on the very first day of a dream job that she had just taken. And so now she's about to go back in. What are, as we're coming out of this, what are the new challenges that we have to face? I think everybody's like breathing a sigh of relief, but yet I'm sure there's new challenges we're going to have to face reintegrating ourselves. You know, Tom, by the way, it's great to see you again. And uh, you. yes. <laughs> I uh, love uh, what you guys are doing out there at Cornerstone. But Tom, I think coming out of it, we, you have to realize that when you're going through tough times, your brain gets on hyper alert. Uh, what I mean by that is uh, you're, you uh, begin to develop a level of angst. It's the other day we were, <laughs> we were uh, looking at a property and I was walking around the backside of this house and I hate snakes. And would you believe I almost stepped on a snake? And, and, and as soon as I realized the snake was there, that thing came at me. I mean, at me. You know what happens in that moment. You get all amped up, and it's like everything you can do to either fight or flight to get out of there. I think what happens during a pandemic like this, and for a lot of people, especially those who are predisposed for, uh, to be anxious or to be discouraged or depressed, when you're getting pounded all the time, your body, for example, is on hyper alert. And so some of the new directions in mental health care that we're learning about is we start seeing connections between, say, the mind and the brain and the body. And if your mind is overwhelmed with fear, with overwhelmed with stress, it starts kicking into sort of a hyper, late, uh, sort of a hyper alert phase where you can't turn it off. All you're thinking about is what potentially could happen, which by the way, influences your brain and your brain influences the DNA of your cells. There's a connection here. So when you're anxious or when you're angry, your body kicks into that hyper alert. Think about that. I think what we're going to realize is that we've been on hyper alert for a long time, especially um, those who have gone through deep waters here. And quote, cooling down for a moment and relaxing and allowing ourselves to settle in because your mind can be a very creative, free place. 
or your mind can become a very dark, turbulent place. Mm -hmm. And you get this, what Joyce Meyer talked about often, the battlefield for the mind. You have to learn to control your thoughts. Paul was saying that in Philippians 8. Listen, don't let your mind run away from you too far. Hey, bring it back, bring it back. In other words, do thought stopping. Get rid of those negative thoughts and begin to think on things that are noble and pure and just and of good report. And when you do that, what does Paul keep saying out of Philippians 4, 4 through 8 and 9? And the peace of God. Say it again. And the peace of God will reign and rule in your heart and life. I don't know about you, but I want a little more peace in my life, especially right now. It's tough, by the way, to have peace, though, when the bills are going unpaid. Kids are out of control. My marriage is bad. I'm worried about my job. Uh, I'm worried about what the future holds. I'm worried about the future for America and more. I'm serious. We've got to relax and calm down. And then we've got to get back to a place where we can believe that God is in the midst of it and that his heart is toward us. And God help us to do that. Well, Dr. Tim, I so appreciate you validating the realness of the struggles that we're facing in this time. And I want to talk about the struggles of our teenagers. Their brains are still developing. How is all of this chaos impacting them as we're seeing a rise in that anxiety and depression? How, how can we help them? And that's a great question because um... You know, families tend to reproduce themselves. We talk, we call it multi-generational flow or transmission. Uh, you're just like your father. Think about that. Think about the flow here. If mom and dad are anxious, if mom and dad are overwhelmed, if mom and dad are fighting, if mom and dad are going through really hard times, mm -hmm. it impacts the kids. We love to think if we don't talk about issues with our kids that somehow they're immune and they won't feel the, the effect of it. Nothing could be further from the truth. The truth is all we've done is we've let them alone to figure out what's going on in the adult world, in their child, in their mind. And that's where we make the big mistake. When I think about kids going through hard times, I use a big word called T, trauma. A lot of what we're going through is very traumatic. It's trauma related. When you think of trauma, then think of triggers that just like us, kids also have triggers. If they see too much news, for example, they hear a siren going off or whatever it is, it kicks them into hyper alert. How can we calm them down? Just a couple simple T's. One, hey, spend time with them. There's something about um, being together. Uh, I learned through the years, you all, and it's, it's, a big, it's a big concept now in mental health care, that the antidote to trauma is relationship. Yeah. In other words, hey, hey, <laughs> getting being together is what we need. We need to know the Lord is near. We need to know that God's with us. These are times when it's good to reach out and touch your children, spend time with them, talk with them, of course, in age appropriate levels. But listen, talk to your kids. Don't ignore these subjects, engage them. And yes, don't overdose on them. We're not talking about that. But Anna, you can give so much to your like your daughters. If you just have a meaningful conversation and you know what? God is in the midst of it. There are good people. In the end, this will be OK. God will see us through. You keep bringing that kind of truth to them and that'll help set them free. It's when they're left alone, when they're up in the room by themselves, when they close the door and they're living online and they're listening to all kinds of messages. And don't think for a moment, they're not being influenced by what's coming through on that cell phone. The majority of their life is being dictated by this, this outside voice. We as parents have got a responsibility to step in and step up into this moment yes. so that we can bring calm and peace to our own children, our families, and our children's families. Amen, that's so powerful. And I just wanna reiterate that it is time for parents to step up and step into the lives of our kids that even when they're teenagers and they're pushing us away that they, they still hear the things that we're saying, we still have an impact and an influence. So Dr. Tim, thank you so much for your time here with us today. Honored to be with you. We'll be right back with more Hope Today after this short break. Every day is a gift. The days of 2020 have been challenging, but God promises a future full of hope. 
A new year begins this month on the Jewish calendar, so we're celebrating new beginnings by offering a unique 16-month Christian Jewish calendar for your best gift. Whether it's a new day or a new year, it's time to embrace the good things God has for you in this season. Not only will this Blessings from Israel calendar inspire you with beautiful pictures of the Holy Land, but it will build your faith with promises from Scripture that add strength and blessing to each day. It even contains resources for Torah study and celebration of holy days. Cornerstone TV is offering it for your best gift by request only. Call 888-665-4483 or donate at ctvn.org. Ask for the Blessings from Israel calendar when you give and we'll get it to you right away. Thank you for partnering with Cornerstone Television. Hope Today is a ministry of Cornerstone Television and we have an outreach ministry called Cornerstone Cares. And we've been featuring one of our Cornerstone Cares partners every day. And here is one of my best friends in the world who is also doing great things for the kingdom of God. Watch this. Greetings. My name is Simeon, Simeon Xiao, and my wife Joyce. Uh, we are with YWAM, serving in Asia. Now you notice I'm wearing a purple t-shirt. And it has a logo here. Let me show you here. It's A-L-L-C with waves uh, crashing on it. Now it stands for Asia Leaders Learning Community. Now A.L.C. started around eight years ago. A number of us uh, who are who have been in the mission for a longer time, we came together. Uh, we founded this this ministry within YWAM with the express purpose of developing younger leaders. One of the things that we have been doing recently is called mentoring circles. For example, the group that I facilitated started in March and just ended a week ago. Ah, Mikok, probably two, three weeks ago now. It consists of an Indonesian, a Korean, an Egyptian, and Finn, an American serving in the Netherlands, and myself. And it was spanning seven time zones. The, er the learning element in our group was on the topic of forming ministry teams. It was a great learning, it was great learning from one another, especially enjoy the relational side, relating, getting to know uh, those others, uh, especially the young ones. Shortly, uh, this mentoring circle will become two groups. We will form one in Europe and the Middle East, another one in Asia. Now, this is, uh, we are, this hope to continue. This is just one of the one aspect of what Joyce and I do. We thank you so much for standing with us and supporting us. This is a shout out to all of you at Cornerstone. Blessings to you. Thank you for praying for us. God bless. Well, I enjoy that so much. And uh, Anna, Simeon has got uh, an incredible ministry influencing young leaders all over Asia. We can't even say the countries he works in, but really helping them with pastoral care and strategic planning for their ministries. He's a great guy. That's awesome. <laughs> Just his face is so warm and welcoming. And I love to see how he is investing into young lives to grow them up to be strong leaders in the Lord. And here at Cornerstone, we believe in, invest in investing in the next generation as well. And that's why we have True You coming up. So Diana Gresh and her team today, they're facing another topic that teams struggle with and today it's all about sex and what girls should do when they are feeling pressured to have sex. Listen in. Welcome to True You where we'll talk about becoming the truest version of who God created you to be. I'm your host and the co-author of Lies Young Women Believe and the Truth That Sets Them Free, Dana Gresh. Did you know that according to a Stanford University study, the average female graduates college with more than seven sexual partners? What's more shocking is the number of them that express regret after their first sexual experience. Today, we won't hold anything back as we'll tell you what those women wish they'd known sooner. 
I'm joined today at the round table by Stacy Rudolph, the lead teacher for True You, and Alina Pitts, singer, songwriter, and actress. And today, no topic is off limits, as always, but we're headed for a really sizzling one, the topic of sex. Um, I really wanna share with you my freedom story, but I wanna do it from the standpoint of the emotions and thoughts I was having as a 16-year-old. So I asked my friend, who's an actress, to share my thoughts with you. So I'm with this guy. He's amazing and always athletic, funny, smart. About six months into our relationship, he starts wanting more from me, physically. And I know I'm not ready for that. I mean, it feels great to be wanted in that way, but I know I don't want that. But I don't stop it. I mean, I'm just afraid I'll lose him, and I don't want that either. I've started journaling my feelings, almost writing letters to God. And I need to tell someone. I want to tell someone. My mom, my best friend, my cheer coach. I think I might find strength there. Find the strength and the freedom to be who I want to be, and not who he wants me to be. I want to tell someone but I can't. Hmm. Wow, that is so just enlightening to hear that you felt that way. I feel like yeah. you're really open and kind of free with your story, but. I am yeah. today, very transparent, right. you know, but for years, it's like the enemy had a gag on me mm -hmm. and I was so afraid to tell someone what I desperately wanted to tell them because right. I was afraid of what they would think about me and I lived in that bondage and because of that bondage, then I lived in the shame of actually becoming sexually active and more wanting to tell somebody, right. but I just didn't feel like I could do that. And I found that's a pretty universal experience for teenage girls that are getting the pressure to have sex with their boyfriend. Definitely. God's definitely brought you some freedom in that though. I mean, yeah. like you're a sex expert now and you yeah. write sex <laughs> She is, she's a sex expert. And she writes like yeah. a bunch of books, millions of people have read well, your books. You know, what, you know? What, what brought me my freedom was getting into God's word right. and saying, I feel lonely. I feel like I can't tell anyone what is the truth. And you know, I found James 5:16. It's really simple, Alina. It says, confess your sins one to another and then you will be healed. And I got so broken that I was like, God, is that true? Is that true that I can stop being so broken? You can heal me if I tell someone. And so I did. And it was like I was reborn again. Like, like I was experiencing my new relationship with Jesus for the first time. It worked. I just beg you, if you're feeling that pressure, tell someone, tell someone today. But let me ask you this. So yeah. a lot of teens, I hear this all the time. And Text, text. Sex is yeah. a weird and tricky topic. Sometimes sex and text come together. Yeah, literally. Yeah. <laughs> sex is a weird and tricky topic, but I hear a lot of teens asking how far is too far. Yeah. So how okay. would you answer that? I'll be straight up with you. That's the wrong question to ask. <laughs> that is not the right question to ask. Let me, again, we know that the freedom is when we find the truth in God's word. So let me read to you Ephesians 5, 3. Hardly ever used when we talk about sex, but it says, but, but sexual, let there not be a hint of sexual immorality, for this is improper for God's people. A hint, a hint, Stacy. A hint, Alina. That sounds impossible. That does sound impossible in our social media sexting world. Like mm -hmm. how, how do you, like even just profile photos, they're mm -hmm. like porn pictures, right? Yeah. There's a hint of sex in them. How do you achieve that in a day and age where sex is so common? And people tell me all the time it's old fashioned. This is an old fashioned book. I'm like, mm -hmm. do you know that when it was written, it was out of style? <laughs> it was never in style. But God, the question isn't how far is too far. The question is how far can I stay away mm -hmm from ruining the holiness and the purity of a gift God does want me to experience mm -hmm. with great pleasure one day, mm -hmm. how far away can I stay from that line so that I can protect it? Mm. I love that. I think that we're always, just from what we see on social media and things and just mainstream church, I think that we always get the message that sex is bad, but like, yeah. no, like God created it. It's beautiful. He loves it but in it's his context. beautiful. That's yeah. right. God, God created it to be beautiful and fantastic and wonderful. But it's more than just beautiful and fantastic and wonderful. It's a picture of something. Let me read to you in the same chapter, Ephesians 5, 31 and 32. It says, therefore a father and mother, a man will leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife 
and the two shall become one flesh. And it's almost then like the Apostle Paul has ADD or something and changes the subject, but he doesn't. He says, I'm really talking about Christ and the church. So from Genesis to Revelation, we see that sex is a picture of the deepest spiritual truth there is, that there is a Savior who loves us passionately and wants to be intimate with us. And so the question that I think everybody needs to be asking is not how far is too far, but if that's true, if sex is a picture of the greatest love, the greatest spiritual truth there is, how motivated is Satan to see that picture destroyed mm -hmm. in my life? That's mm -hmm. the question we need to be asking ourselves. Yeah, for sure. Mm -hmm. We wanna tell you guys, if you, um, are finding that you have a lot of shame, that you've made mistakes in past relationships. I've said it before and I'm gonna say it again, tell someone. Mm -hmm. Just like Dana says in um, James chapter 5, verse 16, it says that if we confess our sins to another, we'll be healed. So I want you to find someone, tell them the truth. Um, don't live in that secret place that, I feel like secrets sometimes make us sick and they trap us. So don't live in that place, tell someone. Seek God's truth because God loves you, the true you. Amen. If you enjoyed today's conversation, we invite you to join us online for deeper discussion at liesyoungwomenbelieve.com. We'd also love for you to send us your one minute video freedom story. Get all the details on our website. Thanks for joining us today. Remember, be the true you. God created a masterpiece when he made you. Till next time. Well, I'm so thankful for Dana and Stacy and Alina for talking about these tough topics. But I also love that they address the importance of fear and shame and how that keeps us in a secret place. Mm -hmm. And today, as we are moving towards prayer, I want you to know that we are here to pray for you and we are here to, um, to point you to Christ so that you can be released from that fear and shame because there's no condemnation That's when right. we're there in Christ. There's no condemnation in Christ Jesus and you can have that freedom in Him no matter what your background mm -hmm. is. Reach out to Him today. Join us in prayer as we pray for those who have called in and let's pray for our young people too that are feeling these pressures. Mm -hmm. Father, we just lift up all our requests that have come in today. And Lord, we lift up our families and our young people, our teenagers, and those that are feeling pressured into doing things that they know that they want to they, they, they want to follow you, Lord. But the, the pressures of peer can be so strong. Lord, give them strength today. And uh, Father, reach out and touch their lives and touch the lives of everyone who called in today as well. In Jesus' name, mm -hmm. amen. 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 Anna, great show. So good to be with you. Absolutely. So glad that you joined us as well. And we're going to be believing for you that you will find God's hope today too.